Hey everyone, welcome to White Sammy Noise Podcast. My name is Oscar Brummel. Before we get started, I want to tell you about a few things that are coming up and how you can support this podcast. This coming Monday at 6 p.m. Central Eastern Time, there will be another video meetup for supporters of the podcast and guests. If you go to patreon.com slash noise, you can get access to this and see the full breakdown of other benefits for supporting the podcast. Also, this coming weekend, I'll be traveling to Stockholm to see a pretty intense live Swedish concert featuring Ochu, Alpha Mania, Trerix Rosit, and a few more. I'll be doing some in-person interviews, which will also only be on the Patreon. Your support via Patreon is what keeps this show going. It's a huge psychological boost for me, and the material support it provides makes it literally possible to do this. So if you're a fan of the podcast, if it means something to you, please consider supporting it today. Extra special thank you to heavy sponsors of the podcast, John Ingram, Tony Stovic, and DF. You can also be a heavy sponsor at patreon.com slash white centipede noise. Also, don't forget, White Sammy Noise is first and foremost a noise label, active since 2010. Five new CDs are out in the past few months from Maranata, Skin Graft, Worth, Grain Belt, and Kakerlak. They're all still available at whitesemmynoise.com or through quite a few international distros at this point. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. And now on to Ted. Welcome to White Sampy Noise Podcast. Today, my guest is the multifaceted percussionist who, among other things, does a, a lot of collaboration with harsh noise artists. Please welcome Ted Burns. Hi, hey Oscar. Thanks so much for having me. Ted, thank you so much for joining me. It's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And uh, looking forward to picking your brain about some things. Cool. Um, so you, I guess, I would say are somewhat, you know, you're very deep in the noise scene. And in some way, you're somewhat of an anomaly because you're very virtuosic, like, <laughs> percussionist. You know, really tradition, not traditional sense. I mean, not like a four in the forge sense, but you're like a straight up percussionist and drummer of a high, high caliber. And you're Thank working you. within noise, which there aren't that many of people doing such things. I mean, noise is, I would say, I don't want to knock it, but it's its almost somewhat conservative in how it kind of views yeah, other that's... sorts of sure. other sorts of genres or approaches. Mm -hmm. um, can you first kind of get into your background as a percussionist and your path as a percussionist your development and training so to speak yeah and then maybe tell me like how i got how here. noise or why noise yeah yeah um yeah so uh you know i think like like most i guess most or a lot of musicians or whatever i started probably playing i think when i was in you know seventh or eighth grade or something um i was uh I'm 46, so in seventh or eighth grade, I guess it was what 1987, 88, maybe. Um, I was, you know, super into like punk rock at the time. Obviously, um, mm -hmm. well, maybe not obviously, but I was, you know, really into things like Crass, um, yeah. Conflict, um, Subhumans. Um, then obviously, you know, like Minutemen and Firehose and and all that stuff. Um, so I, yeah, I kind of started playing with, with kind of the idea that, with kind of the idea that I, I definitely liked the weirder end of the spectrum, I guess is my point. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so then, you know, throughout high school, um, I, I got actually really into like, um, rap music, um, and funk. Um, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of what I started playing um pretty much exclusively it was like funk stuff 
Um, and then, uh, yeah, I was in, I, I was in a few bands in, in high school, um, in early high school. Um, like, yeah, some funny stories there, but, um, we won't waste time on those. But, um, so then I went to the Berkeley college of music in Boston. Um, and I, like most people that went to Berkeley only stayed for a handful of years. Um, mm -hmm. because I, I didn't really feel like the right fit. And part of that, re part of that reason was because while I, um, while I was there, I met another drummer named Phil, uh, Phil Horvitz. And mind you, at the time I was like still playing funk and just kind of doing mm -hmm. what did, that kind of thing. Um, and Phil, I don't even remember how we met, but he, he was like, he was the first person to play, um, naked city for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, the mm. Zorn band, yep. um, <clears throat> with Joey Baron and, uh, Bill Frizzell and I, and, yeah. um, Wayne Horvitz. Anyway. Um, so, and that just fucking just completely blew my mind, you know, um, yeah. just, I mean, and, and obviously naked city is like a very, it was a very composed music. Um, sure. I mean, all those, all those track, all those tunes have, have scores, but, um, it was the, it was the first time I'd any, I'd heard a, a drummer play that way. Um, yeah. this was like, you know, I mean, what, 90, 94, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, after, after he hit me to naked city, then it was just, you know, then it was, you know, Jerry Hemingway, who's, who's another drummer, um, who I, who I love. Um, and I mean, just, just all of these, all of these people, you know, like the, yeah. the, some of the weirder Jack Dijonette stuff I've never heard. Um, you know, and Christensen, um, who was, you know, one of the iconic sort of ECM drummers. Um, mm -hmm. and so, so like a wide swath, right. It was like, you know, some sort of improv stuff, some kind of like more kind of modern mm -hmm. jazz kind of stuff, some, yeah. But anyway, all this shit was new to me and I was like a fucking sponge. Um, yeah. And it was cool because it was like all the stuff that um, like it wasn't like somebody was like, OK, here's like, you know, sort of weird drumming from, you know, from this point to this point. It was just like I was just sort of getting the smattering of stuff that was from all different kinds of kinds of scenes. Right. Um so it, I guess my point is, is that I, I sort of never compartmentalized a lot of that stuff the way that a lot sure. of people do or, 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 or did, or if, you know, it's like now it's like, you know, if you go to New England conservatory or something, you can take an, you can take, they have, they have like improv, you can do that there. Right. Yeah. Um, so you're sort of learning about a lineage, which I also think is super important, but you're learning about a lineage of people who kind of play your instrument. Um, right. Whereas I kind of got thrown into this you know, in the middle of one thing, at the end of one thing, at the beginning mm -hmm. of another thing. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, so sure. I started hearing all these, all these musics and all these people and it just fucking blew my mind. And honestly, like, so I left, I left Berkeley with the idea that I was, cause I also super, I'm from Los Angeles. So I super okay. missed home in Boston. Yeah. Sucks. Apologize to anyone who lives in Boston <laughs> that's listening to this, but, um, it was not to my taste. Um, mm -hmm. So the idea was that I would sort of come home and then continue music at USC, um, which I did not do. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not really sure why. I think in retrospect or hindsight, um, it was because, like, I didn't know what the fuck I was I would do anymore. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's just like I was sort of on this one thing for a really long time. And then, you know, found all this other stuff. And I, I didn't even I. I I couldn't get, I couldn't get my head around playing that way, getting involved with people that play that way. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just didn't know how to, it, it just all seemed so foreign, which is, I think what was so attractive about it. Right. Yeah. Which is, um, you know, probably why people, you know, it's, it's why anyone gets into weird music. Right. Cause the first time you hear sure. it, you're just like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Um, and so then honestly, I just stopped playing for like a really long time. I stopped playing for, I don't know, six or seven years or something. Didn't touch my drums. Not once. Um, Did like this new kind of sound like fuck you up where you were like, yeah, yeah. Well, like yeah, I just like, I, like it kind of changed, it like shattered your kind of understanding of, of music. 
Well, it, it can, well it, it, it sort of did, but it also it also made me sort of, and we can kind of get to like the sort of text, sonically textural elements of of things because that's actually like yeah. I mean, no surprise, a big part of what I do, but um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it, it it sort of it changed, it definitely changed the way that if I were to play my instrument, that I would want to approach it, like, yeah. I you know, it just sort of like, you know, it, it was just, and so. During that time, I, I kept listening to all this stuff, you know, I would, I, you know, um, like any, any sort of modern jazz thing, a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. on ECM, because um, mm -hmm. that's kind of still where my, my head was. Um, and so then um, I had met a, I had met. Um, a guy who was DJing here at a, at a, we have a radio station in Los Angeles called KXLU, which is kind of like, uh, mm -hmm. it's like the sort of iconic college radio station. It's like when sure. you think of like the nineties term college radio, it's like exact, you know, yeah. it's like, it's, it's still exactly that, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. still super weird. And, yeah. um, cool. and so I'd met, I'd met this guy's name is Jean Claude and he played guitar and, you know, at, we actually, we actually, the first time we met, we went to, um, Project Blowed, which was, um, a hip hop club in Lamert Park. Um, it was sort of like where, you know, it's the far side freestyle fellowship. Yeah. 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 I feel like I know that. I feel like I know that name from like, yeah, yeah. Um, rap and from so, yeah, yeah. And, and Lamert Park was, is a very interesting place in Los Angeles because, um, around the corner, uh, was this place called world. It's well, actually, it's still there. It's called world stage, which the jazz drummer Billy Higgins started. Mm -hmm. So it was this sort of super, and they were literally within like a block of each other. So when you just, I mean, it was, it's crazy to think that like, you know, two very iconic, basically the, the two American sort of musical art forms yeah. existing in this, in this, in this black community. And I mean, it's anyway, I, I thought it was super beautiful, but anyway, so the first time that Jean-Claude and I met, we, we went to project blow and this was kind of at the end of project Blode's kind of, kind of thing. Um, but he's like, he's like, man, would you like ever want to do something together? And I was like, like what? And then he's like, well, you know, what if we did kind of like a, like a kind of weird groove kind of, you know, kind of thing. And I was like, okay. So, yeah. um, anyway, long story short, uh, that's kind of what got me back into playing. And mm -hmm. it was something that I could like, it was stuff I knew I was playing grooves. Um, and you know, we were just kind of having fun with it and we, we ended up gigging a bunch and, uh, did a bunch with the Anticon folks for those people, for people who know what Anticon is. Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah. And it was, it was called Occidental. And so then, uh, sorry, this is a long, I don't know if this is boring. So no, then anyway, no, after cool. that, that's, cool. I didn't, that, that's great. Uh, after that, I, um, that sort of ended unceremoniously. Um, and I was like, and I was like, fuck, well, okay, I guess I'm playing drums again. <laughs> yeah. <know>? yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. and, and now I, now it's like, has nothing to do with the band or other people. So yeah. then I, I just started, it was like almost like going back to school again. I just started yeah. fucking shedding for two hours a day, um, ingesting as much stuff as I possibly could and sort of like found a bunch of, found a bunch of drummers and percussionists that I like. And again, in that sort of nonlinear format, um, mm -hmm. which was really meaningful to me. Um, mm -hmm. cause you know, like, like, like I didn't. I didn't honestly hear like Paul Levins, who's, you know, an iconic, uh, free, imp free improvising drummer, um, from the sixties until now. Like I, I didn't mm -hmm. honestly hear Paul Levins until probably like 15 years ago. Sure. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, 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 and I'm sort of glad that I didn't, um, cause I felt like had I heard him younger, I would have just been fucking ripping off Paul Levins this whole time. Right. Um, right. for example, um, yeah. But so then, yeah, so then I found all these, all these, all these folks. I mean, obviously Lovins is like the most extreme example. And I mean, I, I'd heard Oxley and stuff before, but you know, like, like, um, Sean Baxter, um, who, uh, rest in peace was, a was, a um, Australian percussionist that played in the mm -hmm. band Pateras Baxter Brown. Um, he also did like some weird, like, uh, gore noise stuff in, um, okay. in, uh, Australia. Um, 
but his his playing, you know, like I would, I, I just sort of amassed this like collective of people in my head where I yeah. was like, this is the fucking shit. Yeah. Um, and then I think I just listened. I mean, I, I'd like, I mean, I still, I still play for two hours every day, by the way. So that's not anything that went away. I mean, I've definitely practiced more in the, in the recent past than I ever did in college, for example. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, yeah. And so, I mean, I just, I have like a, a just an insatiable um, appetite for that stuff. And, and yeah. also like, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, I didn't get my fa- my first tattoo till I was 30. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm so glad that I didn't really sort of get into any of this stuff until I could sort of properly simulate it until I, yeah. until I had enough of a, of a physical skill set and, and, an, and a connection to, to various types of music where I could sort of fit aspects of these players into my playing that I liked without sounding like them. Right. Yeah. Um, Cause that's the other thing. Like uh, it, I mean, it's, it's, uh, if you wanted to be like a free improvising drummer, like it's pretty easy to sound like other folks. Like, yeah, I know, imagine, the, the, I imagine. The, yeah. There's a few trademark things that certain people do that, you know, yeah. and, and there's, and there's a lot of people, uh, a lot of drummers who sort of, who, who do that and that, and that's fine. But, um, yeah, I, I, I just, I never wanted to sound like anyone else. Yeah. That's, that's very, I mean, that's, yeah, that's very interesting because I mean, maybe that kind of ties into why you have this very, I feel unique voice as a percussionist. Granted, I know very little about free improv, free jazz percussion Mm -hmm. in general. I mean, I, I know very little about it, so I don't have that frame of reference, but I do think it's very valuable sometimes. I mean, we like to say, yeah, go go study the classics, go study this. But I think it's really good, especially in, well, I think in any genre of music, but especially in like more free or experimental or things that are supposed to be pushing like the individual characteristics of your taste or whatever. Yeah, You don't have to do that. Maybe you shouldn't. I mean, maybe it's not good. I think, you know, noise yeah. can be better, like some kid doesn't need to go like back to the get all the nineties, like classic nineties noise and work his way up until now to be able to make good noise. I mean, a lot lot of people don't find out that stuff until much later and it's, and they're better off for it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I I think it absolutely was like the, the sort of best, um, yeah, the best, the best thing to happen. I mean, to my playing personally, like, I mean, to my playing, like, commercially like <laughs> probably not but like um because i mean I, I at this point i've i've i mean i like to think that what i do is varied right like i can play very quiet music i can obviously yeah. be involved with sort of very l- louder music etc et but um but but i've painted myself into a bit of a corner um but it's a corner sure. that i want to be in so it's, yeah it's it's okay neural operations presents Death Squad, collected documentation, North America and Europe, 1998 to 2000. With contributions by Scott Arford, Liam Barto, J. Fred, Russ Kent, Thomas Novak, and Jason Quell. 204 pages presented in a perfect bound book. And three CDs, plus a two and a half hour DVD. Two download codes included. One for the Theological Genocide 25th Anniversary Edition. And radio shows from the first book's special edition. An audiobook is available for collected documentation 1997. Visit dsbook.info. Out now on Rural Isolation Project. Scathing. CD reissue of an early scathing cassette released on Idiopathic Records in 2019. Size Affix, Americasm CD. Ted Burns, Speed as Expression CD. K2, Democratica Spastica 6-Panel Digipack CD. And Cosimoto Endo and Scum Collaboration CD. Psychoacoustic Studies and Noise Snippets. Release is still available from Neural, Jugend Verkhoff, Genophobia, JSH, The Rita, 
N. Nihil, White Widow, Government Alpha, Henrietta, and more. Select titles available from White Centipede Noise, Skeleton Dust, Scream and Writhe, Satatawata, and Cold Spring. Do you have any, do you play in any bands that are kind of like four on the floor or more traditional? I don't even know in, if I could in, really even do that anymore, to be honest. Yeah, that's what I was, what I was curious about, like, you know, you, like no rock bands or something like that. I mean, because no, all, I mean, all, all of your recordings that I've heard are, you know, nothing like that, of course. And, you know, you post regular, you regularly post like videos on Instagram of you rehearsing and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, it's very, it's very much in that. What, what, what would you, I also, I would say the, I also closest, thought, the closest thing to like a rock thing that I did was last, I mean, and I don't know if this counts, but you know, that band, the OCs, you heard of them? Mm -hmm. They're like, I, I mean, I hadn't really either, to be totally honest, but they're like a big, they're like a big kind of like psych rock band, mm -hmm. I guess, apparently mm -hmm. like, but like mm -hmm. pretty big. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the guy whose band it is lives in my neighborhood mm -hmm. and it was during lockdown. Um, he would go and like walk his dog, I mean, around the neighborhood <laughs> and he would hear, like hear me practicing every day. Um, and he left a note on my car. Um, asking if I wanted to do something together. So we, we, we did. And, uh, I think the record came out two years ago. Um, okay. but I mean, it's, it's literally, it's like me playing, it's me doing sort of me. And then he like put a, a, a band together sort of on top of that. Um, okay. and then, so it's, it's pretty weird. I, I think I like it. It's yeah. definitely not for everybody. Like, it was hilarious. There was like a review in the uh, of the record in the Guardian, and oh. it like, I mean, it was one of these reviews that was like super facepalm. But it was like, yeah, it it was just hilarious that like no one could understand what people had a really hard time with my playing on that record. Which yeah, was, well, yeah, 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 which was sort of gratifying in a way. And for me, I was playing just like, you know, pretty, I mean, not straight, obviously, but um, yeah wasn't particular well anyway uh but it's yeah super, anyway, it's so, so relative with this kind of stuff i mean i, I talk about this a lot it's so, so relative with music that you know i i think is accessible you know i'll, I'll you put on something for some people something you think is like normal like pop music or something that's like oh this is so dark or this is so weird or like it's like this is like you know this is like i don't know like <laughs> It's like the tamest shit I have. What do you want? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like it's, it's it's super relative, and it's yeah. but yeah. So um, I mean, so so I guess like that's the closest thing to a rock record. But I mean, that wasn't me playing rock music. But I would I would definitely consider it a rock record. Okay, but you mm -hmm. you weren't were you doing like the the? F I wasn't playing beats. No, no, you weren't playing beats. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. You someone else was. No, no. He, so oh, here's what happened. Yeah, no. So he, he just got, he wanted me to record. I mean, this is actually kind of crazy how it all happened. I just recorded like eight tracks for him uh -huh. of just eight, you know, like eight sort of song length, different yeah. things. So, you know, five minutes, one, six minutes, yeah. one's four minutes, yeah. three minutes, whatever. Yeah. Um, and sent them to him. And then he just like wrote like, I mean, they're, they're instrumentals, but he just like basically wrote tunes over these tracks and had like, there's like five people on the record. There's like a bass player, a sax player, there's keyboard players, guitar player. I mean, it's like, yeah, all sort of just based on these like eight pretty weird things I sent him. Cool. It's pretty funny. Is, yeah. Is it, is it under the name of the OCs or is it? No, it's, name? um. I think it's just under all of our names. So it's like John Dwyer, okay. Ted Burns, but the record's called, uh, it's called Endless Garbage. Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty, I mean, I don't know. Listen, check it out. I yeah, don't know. Cool. We'll but, yeah, we'll check it out for sure. Um, I, I, I've noticed, I noticed somewhere you, I think you posted a review of one of your recent records and i think the the reviewer referred to it as jazz or free mm -hmm. jazz or something like that and you were like i'm not jazz you like you know what what would you do you have like a title or or, or a genre that you kind of associate yourself with 
And why well, wh- why do you specifically reject like free jazz or jazz? Like on a well, technical level. Yeah, so I mean jazz is I to, to me, you know, jazz is a I mean, okay. Like certainly the kind of music or playing that I trade in uh is heavily informed by the history and legacy of jazz music, right? Mm-hmm. That is patently true. And you could actually you could actually say that about any form of American music to be honest, right? right. Same right, with right. rock and roll, same with hip hop, same with like yeah. whatever. But in terms of but yes, there is an intimate relationship, obviously, with the kind of music that I play and and jazz music. Um, free jazz to me always seemed like a way that white folks specifically categorized music that they didn't understand. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I mean, there's obviously a lot of European um folks that, and, you know, no diss to European players, um, no. but, 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 but they do refer to their music as, as free jazz. Um, and I guess, yeah, if you're trying to, if you're trying to market and sell a thing, I, you know, I understand. Right. Um, but I would contend that I, that I don't play jazz, um, sure. nor, nor do I play, uh, free jazz. Um, yeah. and it's, and, and, and honestly, those statements are out of reverence to jazz as a music. Sure. It is not about the fact that I do not want to be a jazz musician. It's about the fact that that is a different thing that, yeah. that other, that other people do. And, and I, yeah. and I feel that it's history and it's, and it's importance, um, is, is, you know, is, is important, right. Yeah. And, 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 it, and it should be revered. Um, I guess if I had to qualify, I, I mean, free imp- free improvisation, I guess, would be technically more what I do, which is obviously related to jazz. But I, I don't. I also don't particularly care for that for that name either. Um, just because it it, it sort of um, it sort of denotes certain aesthetic things that I that right. you know sonically aesthetic things that I feel like I, I don't I'm not interested in or I'm, I'm not I'm not part of. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Like when people ask me, you know, cause I've, 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 I mean, we all have friends, right. That aren't in music. They're like, Oh, what, right. what kind of music do you play? It's like, well, I mean, I, I guess you might consider it kind of weird and like an exploration of, of, of different sounds or instruments, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is like such a, which is also super tropey, but it's better than being like, oh, I play free improv or I don't know. to me. Sure. Yeah. No, that's 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 fair. I mean, it's I I like that, you know. I mean, I I like that in your biography, typically, or like your your description of yourself. Like you describe yourself as a percussionist and drummer primarily. You know, mm-hmm. it's like I like that it's not loaded with this genreification, but also what you do keep... is, is very very special and specialized, and but also open. I mean, it's also very multifaceted. But I mean. You know, Thank you. When someone says I'm a percussionist or like I'm a drummer, it's like, oh, you like what do you, you play? play yeah. yeah, like <laughs> you like yeah. play rock music. You know, it's it's like that's kind yeah, of like yeah. what. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's like demands. It demands like context, right? Yeah. Like it, um, and I, I don't know. I uh, as much as context. Well, it's funny that this is maybe a funny conversation. Like it, context in music to me sonically is not important, but I understand how important it is to a lot of people. And honestly, harsh noise wouldn't exist for lack of context, right? Like right. it's, it, it's a, it's an entirely contextually based form. Right. Um, so, but, but I think, and, and, and I say that like as a fan, right? So like, I think if somebody's a harsh noise fan, they understand the context of, 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 of the genre and everything that's come before it, and, you know, kind of the things about it, they like the, right. you know, the artists who share those kind of qualities. Yeah. Um, but I do, I also do think that, so there's a drummer named Joey Barron and, um, I'm going to, I'm going to totally fuck up this paraphrasing of his quote, but it was something to the fact of like, Context shouldn't matter if you're at a if you're at a show. Like if you see something and you and you enjoy it, you're probably just going to enjoy it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought that was really interesting because like, I've definitely, you know, like, I think, you know, even one of the first noise shows I went to, you know, as loud as, you know, it's like too, you know, it's too loud. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and it's, and it feels violent and, and just in this, it's in this other place. And it's just like, you either like that or you don't, right. There's no, there's right. no level of contextual information that will right. get you there if there isn't already a baseline for you to enjoy that. Um, and, 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 and so I always thought that that was, and obviously, you know, our, our lives are some of our experiences, right? So it's like had, but you know, I, I, I've done a bunch of solo gigs around people who have probably only ever heard pop music, right. That'll come up and be like, fuck, that was amazing. Or like, I mean, not, not to pat myself on the back, but like, just like I'm doing something that is well without of their, you know, well out of their sort of understanding of, or, or not even understanding well out of just how they see music. Right. Right. And, and they enjoy it. And, 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 and so, and so to me, like, I think that once the form is presented, I think providing the context is a little moot. But sure. Yeah. For, for me and my point. practice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, th- I, I think about that a lot. And I think a lot about that with noise, with harsh noise, is that mm-hmm. um, people who, people, you know, kind of think, well, what am I supposed to, like, what's going on here? I think, I think a, live, a live show is the best way to present it to someone. Yes. A lot of people, even if they don't have any sort of, you know, intellectual interest or understanding or experience with, you know, extreme art or whatever will oftentimes be very moved or, or at least have a, some sort a of reaction. experience with it. and oftentimes yeah. a positive one, oftentimes like, Oh, that's pretty cool. No, I, I, I Whereas right. like, you know, if it's presented in kind of a way like, Oh, you have to understand, you know, there's some theory behind it or it's about, you know, darkness and killing and, you know, rape and violence, or it's, right. it's noise. I mean, even, even when you call it noise, I think that provides a context where people look at it as noise as opposed to sound. Because the word noise already has a lot of context, you know, like Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, and, it's, and and a lot of it the word and a noise lot of it means you're supposed to do this. You know, like mm-hmm. you're supposed right. to go like this and it's but like the noise might be very actually pleasant or at least stimulating and not offensive, but well, once dude, it's this I mean, is noise. It's like, it's like look at all these people that are like into this ASMR stuff or what you know what i mean exactly. it's like people exactly. or or like you know i'm a i'm a car person like the way that yeah the way that car people talk about exhaust or engine sounds it's like exactly okay, you're just fetishizing this sound yeah like yeah. you know you realize that right like you, yeah. you, you can you like it. yeah right you can like sounds that aren't presented as music i mean I'll, i right. do think oftentimes noise is presented as music and and, and i think it should be but like my yeah. point is like getting people over that hump it's like right. no you like the way that when you crack an egg, you like the right. way that sandpaper sounds. You like the yeah. way that your exhaust sounds. You like the way, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, and, 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 and I do think a lot of the times that obviously there's context involved in those things, but also there's just not, I mean, if you just like yeah. those things, you just like those things. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Stool Mountain, 3 CD, out now on Absurd Exposition. This altar of flies, alter ego, presents a deep dive into fractured reservoirs of textural discourse, whiffs of smudge sophistication, crusted complexity, substance over style. Available from absurdexposition.bandcamp.com or screenandrive.com.
This episode of White Centipede Noise Podcast is brought to you by Oxen Records. Now available on Oxen Records, Dressing, From the Body to the Door CD. Dublin-based artist Kevin Kerwin, Sounds in the Vein of Hands 2. Purgist, Heat Sink CD. Oral Atmospherics, Waterlogged Drones, and Weather-Beaten Pulsations. Other titles still available, Scum and Unsustainable Social Condition, Necessary Downfall CD. Leah P., Surviving the Familiar CD. Systemic Sewage and Unsustainable Social Condition, All Available Weaponry CD. Available at oxenrecords.bigcartel.com. So, now you're, you know, how how then did what, where you've become, the point you've become to as a percussionist, Mm -hmm. how did that kind of transfer into working so much in the world of noise and harsh noise? As a percussionist, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> did it choose you, or did you choose it? I mean, I don't. I don't know. See, it's it's funny. Like, I guess you know. Like, I mean, obviously, uh, yeah. There's there's a bunch of records now. I guess, um, and um, I have a lot of friends in in, in that world. Um, but I, I, you know, I definitely like don't consider myself like a noise artist. Um, sure. Or, or, and, and, and I think in a lot of the ways, like I'm sort of on, on the, I feel like I'm on the fringes of it. Um, but like, I, I don't know. I'm a, I like, I think people that are on the fringes are, are interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I actually don't know what my, <clears throat> what the first thing, what the first thing was. It might've, Uh, shit. It might've been, it might've been Sissy Spacek. Um, well, okay. So I guess if we want to go back a little bit, so mm-hmm. I guess my involvement with all this kind of stuff actually started with, um, so I used to be sort of involved or this, there's this organization here called SASIS that was like a sound art organization. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were booking me sort of frequently to, to do gigs or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. and around that time I, I met, um, Ace Farron Ford, who was part of the LAFMS, um, and Vetsa, who was also part of the LAFMS. Um, and so then I got, I got, I played with a lot of LAFMS people Mm -hmm. for, for a time. And it's funny, like until I'd met them, I, I literally, you know, I literally had no idea, um, what it was. Um, I obviously quickly learned, um, and I honestly have very little idea of what it was. I, I see the name, like every, like I see the name, like, yeah, cited places, but I really know very, I know. Well, if you've heard Airway or Schmegma, those are LAFMS yeah. bands. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I mean, La Forte Four. I mean, you know, just hammer, um, yeah. Tom or Sean, um, uh, yeah. So, um, I, Joe Potts, Rick Potts, I mean, there's, it's, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, so I, I, I got sort of involved with them in a way that I, um, yeah, w- was cool. Um, I'm on a few airway, uh, records, um, cool. uh, some other, some other things, um, did, did a bunch of stuff for one of Ace's ensembles. Um, and then, so I think that that was like the sort of first, but I mean, then I was still just kind of playing like, you know, um, like I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to emulate any, any sort of sound, mm-hmm. um, for example. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I guess the first like sort of noise thing I, I, I did was probably that, uh, SpaceX duration groups record, I, but I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... Yeah. And then like, I've done some things like in terms of playing, like with other people, um, I've done some like in, in, in that, in specifically in that way. Um, mm-hmm. I've obviously done things with Charlie Muma, um, and, um, this, uh, Brent who used to have, or I don't know if still has a project called HHL, um, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. um, done things with, uh, Matt purse, um, you, um, yeah. you and Mumo, you and Charlie Mumo, was that wood and metal? 
Yeah, so it was actually before, I think that was before Wooden Metal, I think, because um, Brent and Charlie had a um, project called Kira. Okay. Which is, um, uh, yeah, which which I think, so Brent was, was handling most of the electronics. Charlie, Charlie, I think, was like, um, I think he had some contact mic and junk metal kind of mm-hmm. thing, and then I was just banging on stuff. Okay. Um, and then, um, let's see. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then wooden metal started, um, after, I think it was shortly after that, the first SpaceX session, cause it was like, Oh, this is like really fun to play together. Um, mm-hmm. cause I mean, you know, Charlie's basically a rock drummer with other yeah. interests. So I think it was yeah. fun for him. And, and and that's not a discredit to him. Like I, Charlie's a, right. a, a a very good drummer, and also like I, I think a, a quite good improviser. Um, yeah. And so yeah, we 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 just started, um, we just started like making these recordings, just kind of cool. like for fun. Um, yeah. And then yeah, we have, we have there's a lot of them now. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I mean back to kind of what I said. I, I was when I first started noticing your 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 music being released, your solo stuff. Ted Burns, you know, I think, um, like on ex- absurd exposition. Like like I started kind of being coming aware of it as it was getting released through noise labels that I was mm-hmm. familiar with. Mm-hmm. And you know, I remember like listening to it. I remember I was thinking, okay, it's described as percussion. It's probably like, you know, percussion. It's probably it's probably like blow. It's probably like. Yeah, like some guy out banging on stuff and blowing out and just, just distorted to hell. But it's like, right. no, it's really, it's really full bodied percussion. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, it is important, kind of like distortion, but you know, yeah, it's important. I mean, there's no distortion added to any of those releases. Yeah, um, like it's just yeah, it's just straight up like you know, like uh, I might add some gain to make it just sound a little louder, but there's never yeah. any. Yeah, there's no like augmentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To it. What? How? How has that? How has that been? I mean, how do you approach a recording? Do you pro- approach recording for like a noise label, so to speak, in a different way, or do you do you do yes. you have a conscious like noise? I mean, because I have a lot of noise. I <laughs> I I read kind of your music in from like have a noise filter, but do you? Do you put that kind of idea into it? Yeah, totally. Yeah, like, I mean, you know, obviously, well, yes, I think especially sort of, sort of then I definitely was like, there was the, there's the tape for, um, Lake, Lake Shark, um, Mm -hmm. that, that, that was, that was very much approached that way. Um, naysayer on foul prey was like totally approached that way. Um, Uh, the, the, the one on absurd, the one on Taylor's label, um, was actually, was partially approached that way. Um, but I was, that was maybe, that just felt like a little bit more open, um, Mm -hmm. or to me it did, but I honestly haven't heard it in in a long time. So maybe, maybe it's not. Um, uh, and then, yeah, you know, and then I did this thing for Utech, which is that kind of like noise or sorry, metal, metal ish label. Mm -hmm. Um, there was kind of, there was a, there was definitely that approach too. Yeah. Um, um, but you know, like that said, like, um, uh, words have two meanings is like a duo record that came out on yeah. fall prey that, that didn't, I mean, obviously there's noisish tracks on there. Um, right, right, right. Like, I, I mean, the, I think the one actually with Bill Hudson is like the fucking noisiest one. Right. Um, uh, but I mean, that's kind of like a, that was like a hey here here's like a bunch of shit that I that I do on one record. Yeah. Um, so and and Michael wanted to release it, which I was really happy about. Um, so I was yeah. like, it's not going to be a noise record. Cool. He's like, oh, that's cool. And then um, uh, and then um, speed is expression. Also, like um, you know, Matthew uh, reached out and was like, hey, do you want to do a CD? And I was like. Yeah, but it's not going to be a noise. You know, I'm not, he's like, that's cool, man. I, yeah, uh, give me a drums, give me whatever you want. Um, sure. So, yeah, I mean, I think now, I think in the be- maybe in the beginning, I was trying to be like, oh, hey, here's the all, here's all this stuff that percussion. Uh, you know, I've like I've like tricked I've like tricked noise fans into like listening to 
solo percussion improvisation. <laughs> I mean, I think you have. I think you have, and I think that's great. I think, I mean, you've tricked me into it because I don't, like I said, I don't really have a lot of background in this. I, I, I'm right. not definitely like open to something like this, but I don't like have. Yeah, yeah. And, it's not and, like you're like and, seeking those kinds of things out. Yeah. Right. And I wouldn't even know where to start and whatever, but I mean, you know, I, I know through like the recommendations and the collaborations and like, you know, your affiliation with like artists that I know and, you know, follow mm -hmm. that I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've listened to your music and the percussion in a very different way than I ever have really before. And I, I mean, it's some, there, there, are th okay. I want to ask about your relationship with Sam McKinley because he's also mm -hmm. a person who, you know, you've, you've collaborated with a lot and mm -hmm. has been a big champion of your work and also mm -hmm. talked about himself, you know, in certain, I don't know, interviews or forum posts. I can't remember where, but like, you know, kind of his fascination with your approach and how it kind of mirrors acoustically what's going on in like a, in a mic, in like a, maybe a small bite of harsh noise. And that's something that I think is very interesting because, you know, when, when, when you say like, when you take like a chunk of crunch harsh noise or even a crunch of a, a, ch a chunk of like white noise or pink noise, you know? And I imagine if you like slowed it down massively, you know, like, like a, a half a second, maybe slowed it down massively, but not pitched it down, but just kind of separated those, that time you'd, you'd have a lot, you'd have many, many, you'd have clusters, you'd have yeah. clusters of, of, yeah. of strikes of, of, you know, of like, yeah, yeah. Of percussive strikes. And maybe not even yeah. like, the, and if it's depending on how it's filtered or processed or, you know, whatever, maybe not even like, you know, white noise is like every frequency, so to speak. But like, if you have right. like a crunch, like maybe you'd only have yeah. like 15 or 20, I mean, probably more, but you know, you, you have like individual sounds that are repeating and almost in the way that a drum kit would, or, you know, yeah. various, various objects would. And I, when so, I hear a lot of your work, it's like you, you, you play it almost like this, like, like, spattering of randomly generated like not randomly generated but like these like highly syncopated strikes so part of the i'm i mean okay yeah i mean so we're on, we're on the sam chapter so part of the reason i play like i do is honestly because of sam's music um i heard the rita i think it was the first like properly harsh thing i'd, I'd ever heard um, and I was obsessed with it because you could listen to it three, let's say, you know, let's say you listen to, you know, magazine or some shit three times in mm -hmm. a row, mm -hmm. you can choose different things to hear yeah. when you're listening to those tracks Yeah, because they're so, they're so dense, right? So yeah. you can, you, you can choose to listen to different things. And I was like, dude, this is like all the sounds at once. This is, yeah. this is like what I, this is like what I, this is what I want to be, um, yeah. or want to do. Um, and it was sort of around the time that I started, it's funny, it's sort of around the time I, I got really into Pateras Baxter Brown, which was Sean Baxter's band. Um, and mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard that band, but it's, it's a trio of acoustic prepared instruments. So there's a okay. prepared piano a prepared acoustic guitar and a, and a drum set. Um, and Sean's playing is spectacular. And I also just wanted to sound like the band when they were sure. playing. Cause it just sounded, it sounds like, it sounds like one fucking, it sounds kind of like an acoustic version of, of that sand material. It's just like one sure. constantly moving machine. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. there's more space, but it, like sure. one organism that's moving yeah. all, all together. Yeah. Um, and the perfections and imperfections that, 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 that creates. Um, so it's, I mean, you know, it like, I, I think Sam might think I'm like being hyperbolic. I mean, just cause we, we, we have a, we are very good friends. We talk regularly just about, you know, stuff now. But I think when we first met, I was just like, dude, like, you know, you're like part of the fucking reason that I play the way that I do, you know, which I think to him was just so like, what the, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's okay. Um, yeah. but I mean, it's, it's honestly, it's honestly true. Yeah. Um, and so I think, yeah, we, we got to know each other cause there was an oxen wood and metal tape that we were, um, so Charlie and I had this idea to do like, 
you know, an acoustic side and then a remix side on a couple things, mm -hmm. right? So we had we had Sam do one and we had Chris Goodrow do one. But mm -hmm. for the the Sam one was the first one, and I didn't know Sam at that point. Um, mm -hmm. And Charlie was like, oh, "I'll reach out to to Sam," and I was like, "Fuck, really? Like, fuck, that'd be fucking amazing." You know, I was just like, yeah. it blew my mind, right? Yeah. And then and then I got the and then I got the we got the track, and it was just you know it's, it's fucking insane. And I remember like it's when I lived in my old house, which was sort of. Well, the layout was a bit bigger, but it was, I had the, I had the track playing on my computer in my, in my, uh, in my office or whatever. And then I was like in the kitchen, which was like on the other side of the house. Yeah. And I was like preparing food and I was like, am I listening to one of my fucking records? Like what, yeah. the, you know, it's just like the, the yeah. pulses and, and, and everything. Yeah. And then I was like, oh no, this is fucking anyway. So it was sort of then yeah. and so I emailed him. And I was like, Hey man, this fucking, this thing happened. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, Oh fuck, that's sick. You know? And then, um, yeah. and then I, I played a gig and I played it at this jazz festival in Vancouver. Um, I invited him and he came and he was just like, Oh my God. And then, yeah. And then we just became friends and now, yeah, we've done a bunch of stuff together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a really interesting ear to put on what you do. And it's also interesting to hear that you, also consciously, you know, use that as kind of a template, but it, in a totally, I mean, I mean, I love that you've never done electronic. I mean, it's, it, it's, you've never done electronics or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah. I think it's great that you're like the, like, I mean, kind of back to this, you're like the honorary, like percussionist. <laughs> musician, <laughs> yeah. And you're doing straight up music. And, uh, but, and you're not, you know, you're getting people to, th I think, listen, I mean, you're getting, you got me to listen very differently. Oh, and I right think it's very important. Yeah. That's I mean, cool. I mean, I think just like, just, just to acoustic sounds and I'm, I'm curious and, you know, um, I don't know, just hearing your thoughts, like how, how, how do you, how your ear is trained? Like how, how, how do you think about texture in terms of like individual sounds in compared to you know, collection of sounds, you know, do you, I, I can imagine that you might have a very quick ear because, you know, like in a, in a rim shot or in a snare hit, for example, you yeah. know, a person who likes knows music might just think, oh, it's like a, it's like a sound, it's like a bang, but you know, there's uh -huh. in that, if you, if you were to, yeah, there's qualities in those things, right? Zoom it in and, and focus on the texture. And I, th and I think that's a very in interesting part of it is like, even within mm -hmm. that, you have like the spectrum of, of white noise, so to speak, you have like the spectrum mm -hmm. of, of things happening, the shorter mm -hmm. the sound is, the harder it is to pick that out. But I mean, the, those, those micro textures are very interesting. Yeah, uh, no, abs absolutely. Like, so yeah, I mean, I sort of hate, sus I hate sustained sound personally. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. like, especially when it, when it relates to, to drums or, or even noise, like the, when things get too feedbacky or there's long things, mm -hmm. I'm just like, that. it's not interesting to me. I, I understand mm -hmm. why people do it. Um, it is not, it is not why I like, the music, um, mm -hmm. like, which is why, like, none of all of my symbols are completely taped up and dead. Like, I just don't like, I don't like anything yeah. that lasts longer than, than a note. Like you will never see me bow a symbol, you know, you'll do nothing that yeah. creates that kind of you'll never do the, the, the scraping of the stick on the, I'll do it with the pine that? cone and it sounds better. And oh, it's okay. crunchy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so I think that sort of going back to what I said, sort of, I guess, much earlier at this point was, um, the, the way that the way that drums sound, the way that specific drummers make their drum sound and the relationship between the different parts of a drum set sonically are have always been fascinating to me. And it's never, it was never anything I totally understood until I started sort of thinking about you know, the idea of sound in a more analytical way versus just, you know, playing the drums or, or, mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, but yeah, like, like the way that, you know, the relationship in sound between like Bernard Purdy's snare drum and his hi hat for some reason is, is like the most gratifying bit of texture. Um, mm. and, 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 and that's obviously largely down to the way that he plays, but also the way that he likes his drums tuned or the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the sort of manner of symbols that he likes. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I realized that I'd sort of been fetishizing 
those those sounds actually from like a super long time ago. Like Tiki Fullwood um, is another one. He, he was the drummer in um, Funkadelic. Um, mm-hmm. And if you listen to something like uh, Super Stupid, um, which is a Funkadelic song, um, just the way, just the, 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 yeah, the interplay between his hi-hat and snare drum um, and cymbals is, is just, and I think part of that's the way that it was recorded, obviously, um, mm-hmm. and the time it, it, of, of which it was recorded. But weirdly, those are the things that I sort of like always fetishize first, which is, you know, like I'm a huge John Bonham fan and, and, and mm-hmm. the, the same thing with, with his, with his drums. And the crazy thing about John Bonham is that that dude could literally play any drum set and they will all sound the same. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that was completely sort of related to a way that he hit drums to like sort mm-hmm. of attain the exact sound that he was looking for. Um, and that shit to me is, is completely fascinating, you know, it's yeah. a, or like, like Joey Baron or I'm sorry to keep talking about drums or, or Jerry Hemingway, oh, for example, yeah. like you hear those guys play and none of those guys are, you know, if they're gigging, they're not playing their own fucking kits anywhere. Cause right. they're like. Um, they're playing the house kit somewhere and sure they tune them, but they always fucking sound like their drums and they always sound like them. Um, right. and obviously technically, yes, you can always sound like yourself, but to make yourself sound pretty much the same on every sort of varying instrument that you play is, 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 I think is fantastic. But, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, so I guess that to, to, to your point, um, yes, those sort of individual shots, uh, or like hits, um, are super meaningful to me. And that's sort of how I choose all of the instruments that I use, you know, on top of the drums. Um, yeah. But so, so what I'm, so. what I'm understanding of what, what, what I've, so the texture, I think you're saying comes from this variance or contrast between, between objects, ostensibly. between objects. I mean, yeah. I mean, honestly, for me, like the, the texture, like the quote unquote texture that I create is entirely like physical. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whether it's on yeah. the drum set, like um, that's playing a lot of notes quickly is what, is what, yeah. is what yeah, that yeah. is. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, same if it's me on the floor, um, unless it's like scraping something, which, which I'll, you know, I definitely do. Um, but yeah, I mean, especially if it's, if it's drum set, like the, the creation of that texture um, is, is yeah i mean takes a lot of or it isn't easy i guess is my point yeah yeah absolutely and i um you know i've 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 noticed like not i don't separate the way you play but i mean i've noticed some some sometimes when you play you're playing what i would say is like a like very fast rolls that you know are basically like i don't know 64th notes or 120 i mean like somewhat kind of like evenly spaced even if very fast and together like yeah, and then sometimes when and then sometimes when you're playing like for example like the, like you know the the cackle car release for example where you're like I think you, it's, it seems to me like you're consciously trying to emulate motor sounds. Yes, the the spacing between these hits is very much like syncopated and irregular. Yes, is do you do you have like a different mindset when you yeah when you when you when you approach those because I mean to me to me like the when you're when you're like doing these kind of more even rolls, to me that's more like okay, this sounds more musical. This sounds more like yeah, what it sounds I, more like yeah. And you know, you know, if it were be slowed down, it, you might have like a more like clear like did it 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 you know. But then sometimes when you play, it's like really just it sounds like splashes, but happening constantly and fast. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- th- that's a that's a choice. Um, yeah, I mean, cackle car is interesting because like, I think people think that we're being like hyperbolic when we're like, no, we're literally just trying to fucking make, we're just trying to emulate this engine sound. That is literally yeah. the, that is the project. That is literally the project, Yeah, <laughs> you know, and it's just, if we can do it a few different ways and make it sound interesting and put a record out, but like, it's yeah. literally, it is literally just that. Um, yeah. It is like that dry. It is, it is, you know, it's supposed to be sort of that straightforward. So it's, yeah. it's super fun. Um, I actually, that, yeah, that one that just, that just came out, I, I really like, um, yeah, it's great. I think it, yeah. I mean, I think it, I think it's like the fullest express. I mean, I don't know if people, 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Do people actually listen to? Like, I don't know if people actually listen to it. I'm proud of it. Is it? It's it's it. But it's you know it's 45 minutes of that. So, do if you're into it, people listen to that. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, noise noise freaks listen to 45 minutes of a lot of. That's true. They, they listen to 45 minutes of worse. Yeah, that's true. And it's not like it's worse, but I mean, like that's that's no. that's very very that's very very uh, digestible and 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 pleasant, like something. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, like I, I, yeah. I guess so. It's it's funny. Like when we first started that project, I think people like didn't really know what it was. Like not sure. only that, like that that was the that was the idea, but that it was like I would play, and then Sam would run that through his. You know, it was just it, they're, yeah. they're they're replicas of each other, right? Like that's what they are and like yeah we somebody reviewed there was a first tape that came out and somebody reviewed it and like thought it was like like kind of like a big music writer who i will leave nameless but kind of thought it was like a like a like a collaboration on a you know like like a duo and i was like no it's, it's so we've sort of since then had to be like very like this is what this is you know like okay. we played gigs and it was like very clear what was yeah sort of happening would you ever have any interest in like electronic rendering of percussion or, or, or electronic drums? No, I mean, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, it, it, I don't want to keep like re- revolving this around like the Rita or Sam's work, but, but his, you know, his, his work with Kakakar car and like his, his current work that is super, super sparse and minimal, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it's, I've almost, you know, which he said is kind of like modeled after or highly inspired by your drumming. I mean, it seems like you guys have really kind of like, um, equal, you know, kind of like yeah, cooperation inspiring each other's like, yeah. like that sound, that electronic sound that he's doing right now with like the processing of like maybe some, I don't know, some, some ballet pieces, but the sound that results is so sparse. And I, f- I feel like you can really look at it and probably actually count you know, you have like certain points or frequencies that are just repeating and it's not, it's, it feels like it's like five or 10, you know, like it's like you have a few, yeah. like it, it, they feel like it, individual drum hits, like mm-hmm. it's not yeah, they sweeping do, yeah. the whole spectrum. It's like, it's like a very limited, yeah. like highly gated with a lot of silence in between, um, handful yeah. of, of points that very mm-hmm. much like a, like a drum set very quick, but I mean. I almost, I mean, it's, it's funny that he has this whole anti-techno thing because I, I almost think this sound, like this, this is approaching like very, very minimal radical techno sounds. You know, it's like, it's approaching some of that like raster Naton kind of style of like. Yeah, yeah, like early compact or something. Yeah, like I, I don't know a ton about that stuff either, but like, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it, it, almost, it almost sounds really like percussion hits what he's doing. And I've, I've wondered if you've ever considered or would be interested in like working with non-acoustic percussive sounds. No. I mean, that that's just not what I, you know, it's like, I think it's, it's, yeah, I mean, like, I full respect to people that make, you know, like, um, well, I mean, a bit like, you know, sort of electronic or computer music or whatever, but I feel like that, uh, it's just not, it's just not where I'm, I think I'm, I, I think I'm personally maybe, I, I prefer like visceral experience, like play, playing for me is a, is a very, you know, visceral, exp- I mean, it's also super frustrating. Right. Um, but it's, yeah. it's, it's, uh, you know, it's about sort of getting, it's about finding sounds that, um, that I didn't know existed or exploring sounds that I, that I, that I like, um, or, or, or whatever. I mean, that's, what's in that. I mean, aside from the technical aspect of it, cause obviously like, yes, I, I, there's a reason I practice so much. Like I want, right. Like I, I like being technically good at, it. right. Um, right, right. But, but from a, from a, a, from a sound perspective, yeah, I mean, the sounds that I, that I like are, 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 or the sounds that I like to produce are, are acoustic. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't really see that change. I mean, do, no, never say never, eh? but like, sure. who knows? Yeah. Um, but, but, but for now I feel like, you know, there's, I, I feel like there's more that there's more there. Uh, absolutely. I mean, there's I more think there's play. a, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a huge, huge limit. And that's something I, you know, I kind of rattle on a bit about sometimes like regarding noise is that, you know, junk metal is like so 
kind of used across the board as kind of like this this standard instrument. But I feel like the 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 possibilities of percussion or acoustic sounds or even mic'd electronic sounds, but other sources are like vastly untapped by by a lot of noise artists. Oh, and, no, you I know, I mean, just, Honestly, you know, you know who fucking did that shit the best was Mania. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like people are like junk metal, and I'm like, just go listen to Mania. Like, yeah, he he, he fucking he did it. He did it. It's perfect. Like, right. and I mean, I would consider, um, I would consider a lot of his, a lot of that percussion, to be honest. Um, yeah. I don't know that he would appreciate me saying that. Um, or actually maybe he wouldn't care. Um, or he, yeah, actually he probably just maybe wouldn't care. Um, it was, I don't, I don't know if I should talk about this, but before, um, before he passed, rest mm-hmm. in peace, um, there was a comp that was being put together um, Mm -hmm. and I got asked to like do a track that Mm -hmm. was like based on one of his tracks. And so I basically did a a mania cover of with, yeah, with all my, with all my junk. And um, it was super gratifying because I had to listen, you know, I'd like, it was important. Like I wanted to listen to this fucking track and be like, I'm going to get this, you know, or I'm going to, I'm going to at least make sure that people know that this is the track that I'm wanting, that I'm doing, you know, like if you listen to the back to back, you'd be like, Oh, okay. I can see the relationship. That's what I was, that's what I was hoping for. But I, yeah, they were the same length, you know, I wanted to like, um, but anyway, so I, and, and obviously I've, I've I've listened to his stuff a a bunch and, and um, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of it, to, I mean, it's super inspiring. I think especially from that sort of, I just think it's funny that people call it like junk, junk noise or metal. I don't know, what, yeah. whatever they call it. Um, metal abuse or something. Yeah, just because he was like, he does it just better than everything. I mean, it's just perfect. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, yeah, not, it is. Better than everybody. It's, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I don't know if people lump neural into that. I mean, they shouldn't, but. I mean, he's, he's a fucking genius too, obviously, but like, yeah, the way that the, those mania tracks where they're, I mean, they were so textured and the, 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 the actions were oftentimes so short, you know, it wasn't like people throwing cans at a wall or something. It was like, right. it was like dragging a thing around, right? you know, and then stopping it and then moving another, th- you know, he was like, he was basically, he was making percussion music. Right. He just didn't. He just didn't think about it that way. Right, and I think I think <clears throat> that's something that a lot more people could do. I mean, they could approach it more from that aspect. And like, okay, you don't I, have to call I, yourself a percussionist, but you you have all these you have all these abilities. You have all these like sonic elements. And I mean, of course, you can't make anything sound necessarily as good as a drum kit. I mean, you have your very you have a drum kit with lots of highly tuned, very specific. S- pieces that have you know been de- designed and built for those sounds but you know you can still hit a wide wide range of of oh, frequencies dude. and textures with all sorts of acoustic it's, objects you know around your house or whatever you know that aren't just yeah the sheet like a single piece of sheet metal you know what i mean no totally dude i mean you can probably get fucking 15 sounds out of a piece of sheet metal and some concrete yeah like literally like maybe more like it's 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 crazy and i mean you know i do a lot of that stuff like all like most of those um releases that we talked about earlier was all shit on the floor um Mm -hmm. like um so i yeah i do that my my studio has a has a concrete floor so sometimes i yeah yeah so it's like you know like that track that sam and i did on that words have two meanings record it's like a yeah just pine cones on concrete yeah super um yeah i am surprised that people don't sort of yeah i mean there's i don't know like i mean there's a rich history of of well i mean you know even if you look at zev or something right like there's yeah, 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 there's a, yeah. or or um fm Einheit from from neubotten before he started mm-hmm. you know before neubotten started sucking like there's a history of of percussion being sort of used in this, in this kind of way, or at least, and, and I sort of thought that, that mania work was sort of like a, a version of that, definitely a, a modern version of that, but like a, a version of that. Um, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 
Yeah. Kids and I, start dragging shit around. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of been, been one of my, like, I don't know, stupid rants that I kind of, like, go on for a little while. But, like, just, like, you know, I'd love to see people doing much much more with what's what's there. I mean, even if you don't want to go beyond – if you want even if you want to stick to the basics or whatever and don't want to go beyond sheet metal because, I mean, there's also glass. There's also all these other acoustic – sound sources that i mean mm -hmm. maybe metal is the easiest to procure and the easiest to use but i probably the safest too maybe the safest, I, I, but I, I, still, I, I, I still glass it's like it can get a little yeah. scary Yeah. Yeah. But like wood, for example, wood is one that no one has really touched. Yeah, I know. A, which is in a really so weird, like, like in a really big way. Or or stone, you know, like it's still pretty untapped as far as those textures. And those are amazing textures that perfectly suit harsh noise, even if you're gonna distort them. I mean even even if you're gonna process them, but like there's Well, if you ran if you okay. Like if you rubbed two rocks together. Like, you know, two kind of porous rocks, not like river mm -hmm. rocks, but like sort of right. like you know, mountain mountain rocks or whatever. Mm -hmm. It sounds incredible, number one. If yeah. you contact mic one, yeah. fed that into something, it would sound incredible. You know, it's just like, there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there are so many. And, 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 and honestly, like when I started fucking around with stuff that wasn't just related to my drum set, like, you know, I would just go on walks like, you know, my partner would just laugh at me. I'd just go on walks and just fucking pick up a bunch of shit and bring it back, you know, just like yeah. little metal pieces, you know, big pine cone, small pine cone, fucking yeah. a random piece of weird wood. I yeah. have I have like a I have a used um what do you call it? satellite dish in my studio. Oh, cool. Like I have like a dryer, like a old dryer tub, yeah. um, you know, big sort of bent um why metal wire pieces you know it's just like yeah that's just i mean i haven't actually gone to do that in a while but yeah i mean i i do that stuff pretty you know regularly because i mean then when you play them or you know you get to you get to see how they how they react or what sounds they make or yeah. if if it's fun i mean sometimes it sucks but sometimes it's fun sometimes you get sometimes you get cool shit for sure yeah Cause there's more, to, you, there's more to do with things than just hit them, right? You rub them, you can drag them, you can tap them lightly, you can pound exactly. them. You can, yeah. There's so many things. Do you feel like people that listen to your work or, you know, I guess, I don't know if you have a, an audience goal in mind, but do you feel like it's, it's <laughs> understood and listened to in the way that you intend it to be or that Honestly? you wish it was? Yeah, I have. I honestly, to be honest, man, I have no idea who listens to what you say. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I really, I mean, other than like friends of mine or people that I know, like, I, I have no, I have literally no idea. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I on a, yeah, I mean, I guess that it makes it makes me happy, you know, when somebody, you know, like when you're like, man, yeah. I've no, I don't own any fucking acoustic percussion records and I like love, you know, I like yours or whatever. Like that shit's, that shit's great. Um, yeah. I, you know, like I, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a weird zone, I think in terms of like my quote unquote career with this, like I, I've, I've, I'm not in any sort of particular scene uh, mm -hmm. necessarily, which, you know, sometimes makes it difficult, but is also like, I'm only doing the things that I want to do. Um, right. And that's super Im important to me. Um, yeah. You know, with obviously the occasional, like, you know, would I have done a record with like a rock guy? Like if it weren't for COVID? Probably not. 
but I did it because, yeah. you know, we were all looking for shit to do, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, I mean, like, it was a fun experience and, like, I'm not just checking the record, but, like, I would say out of, out of everything that I've, that I've done, like, that's the only thing that I, that is maybe, like, a little bit out of left field. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sort of in the fringes of, of noise. I'm sort of in the fringes of improv. I'm kind of, you know, um, sort of neither here nor there, which, um, which suits me just fine, actually. <laughs> So Do you, you ever get, answer your question. I have no idea who listens to my music. I hope that whoever they are, that they get something out of it. Do you ever get, do you ever like, do you ever feel like frustrated or like it's trite to be like viewed through like a, like a, a noise lens, like what you're doing? Like, no, like to talk, like to talk about like, Oh, it's like, it's just like harsh noise. Like these different textures you're doing. I mean, does that, does that kind of. No, to me that you? means it's, it's no, that to me, that means it's successful, right? Like, I've, I've shown this person a thing that, that maybe, you know, they didn't think could be done that way or, or they've never heard that way or, yeah. or, 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 or whatever. I mean, like, you know, like it, it, like those records to me were my, were me trying to make a noise record. Right. Sure. So like, yeah, I would want somebody to look at it that way. Like if somebody yeah. heard naysayer or double negative or whatever, um, or even, you know, the, the one of the wooden metal, maybe the newest one on AAD. Yeah. Um, I would want them to look at it that way. I would want them to yeah. like turn it all the way the fuck up and just fucking yeah. zone out with it. You know, that's what it's there for to me. It's sort of like yeah. this. I don't want this to sound like a disc, but it's like me making it's like pop music, right? Like I am sure. making a thing that and obviously the, the texture and all that stuff is is very important to me. But it's also like if I. Yeah, it's like me doing a thing for like for a specific end purpose. Yes. Right? And I think it's cool now because those records kind of those records and tapes and such kind of introduced you to a lot yeah. of years into a totally. kind of a circle. But now I think yeah. the stuff that you've done since then, like the, the new one on rural isolation, for example, is very clean. I mean, it's, it's, it's very like it's, and it's very much like a straight, percussion record it's not you yeah. know like an Im improv i don't i want to say i don't know how i want to classify yeah yeah i don't know how to describe like, it either it's not yes, like it, it's not like it's not like um necessarily it's not noisy or whatever right and i mean no i mean but i think but i think it's fantastic that it's now existing in this world and getting and people are you know picking it up and listening to it and it's not having to dress itself up as like hey i'm a noise record it's like this is something but it, but it scratches those same itches, and it has that same. If you like deep listening, and if you like, you know, chaotic sound, there's yeah. a lot, lot to listen to there, and I think that's great. That's kind of infiltrated people in some way in that way. That's that's I'm I'm glad to hear that because yeah, that's that was that's totally the idea, <laughs> and and also yeah, I mean, just like what I like in music, it's like what I like in noise is being able to listen to something four times in a row and to be able to listen and hear it differently. Right. And, and yeah. I hope that, I hope that my playing does that. Like, yeah. I hope that it, I mean, I'm, I am absolute, I am absolutely trying to make it dense enough to do that. Like that yeah. is fully a choice. Yeah. Um, well, and an intent. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously that, that comes from, from a variety of things, but obviously, yeah, I mean, my interest in harsh noise, I, I mean, and Sam's music specifically, had uh, has a huge hand in that. Um, yeah. So while it's not like aesthetic harsh noise to me, it it's it's part of it's it's part of the uh, I don't know the zeitgeist of it. I guess maybe yeah, it is, it is, it is for sure. And it's, I mean, yeah, I, that harsh noise in my opinion should be about deep listening, and that's what it really gets into. Yeah, it. I agree, I agree, and I like. It's another thing. I'm kind of a kick on it. Is just kind of like this idea that harsh noise can be, remain harsh noise and go beyond what you can achieve with like just a guitar pedal distortion. Like, mm -hmm. like I do feel like there's still such a vast realm of sounds that you know are still 100% harsh noise and still like focus on that static and that texture, but that go beyond 
kind of the the safe methods that a lot of people are using yeah. employ and yeah. have been using for a long time and then and i and i love those methods i'm not like knocking them but i mean like i, I i'm excited about your work because it, it just opens up the brain to thinking about textures in a different way no that's cool yeah i i i, I thank you thank you um, sure yeah what about yeah. some other collaborations that you've done that you um that you're happy about that were particularly interesting or fun for you? Um, uh, Bill Hudson and I have a, have a duo that's, that's fun. Um, uh, I, I enjoy that. Um, uh, oh, uh, there's, there's a fun thing that, um, the saxophone player, uh, Michael Foster and I are doing with Sam that uh hmm. is in mid process that i that will be a cd um that will be coming out hopefully soonish um that was that was fun it's also pretty weird um cool. yeah i mean i love i love the stuff with charlie actually the past couple of wood and metal things we've done like remotely which has been mm -hmm. really fun cool. um like, I really enjoy that. And then, yeah, I mean, you know, and then like the couple sort of like other, you know, it was like fun to be on, it's fun to be on the clipping record. It was fun to be on yeah. that Lingua Cata record. It was fun to be on, you know, that's a Jesus record or whatever. Sure. Um, yeah. Like I enjoy doing, I enjoy doing that stuff. There was a, there was kind of a time where I would, where that was kind of happening more often. I would, so I would like to um, sort of, you know, that's, that's always fun to do. It's always fun when somebody's like, Hey, come do your thing on, on my thing, you know, yeah. see if it works. Um, definitely. So that was, yeah, I would are say you involved that, in yeah, I mean, go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say, are you involved in hip hop or have, I mean, I know you were kind of like, like, aside in, from like, being a fan, not, not really. No. Okay. Yeah. Never, like, I mean, the, the other, I mean, I guess the clipping thing is the, is the only like hip hop related thing I've, I've, I've done in my, in my recent, recent past here. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be fun to do more. I mean, I don't know. There was, there was like a time where I was like, man, it'd be cool to put together like a sample library or, a, or like a beat library. Um, and I've I actually, I, so I did, I did a couple grooves for, uh, for Nika, um, that sh I think she's going to do something with. Um, mm -hmm. but I mean, yeah, that's not hip hop, but there are grooves. Um, but yeah, I just sort of haven't gotten around to doing it but, it'd be but fun. sample library and beat library that implies so you maybe ha do have some electronic ambitions no no just putting just putting together like like uh sounds for producers oh, to like, take oh yeah, like yeah, of yeah. your of your kits yeah 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 okay exactly. okay, okay got it got yes. it got it yeah that's yeah. cool too okay cool nice yeah but i haven't i haven't done it yet it's it's something i've sort of been thinking about on and off but uh, maybe one of these days <laughs> nice cool yeah. Cool. Well, um, I would like to ask you, I don't, I mean, I don't know how much you really, really listen to noise in like a really heavy, like fanatic way, but mm -hmm. what are your top five noise releases of all time? Like the five that maybe are like the most important for you or either just for, as a, even just as a listener or maybe like t that, you know, specifically to yeah, your, that I've gotten things from, um, yeah. I mean, I would maybe rather do artists because I feel like individual sure, sure, releases. Sure. Sometimes I'm less hip to the actual names. Um, yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would definitely say, obviously, the Rita, but obviously, so I know that there's like different so, so sort of different versions of of Sam's work. Um, I I love the. I mean, I you know I I listen to the sort of newer stuff pretty regularly. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, honestly, like maybe, maybe it would be magazine for the Rita sure. or even skate. I fucking, I love skate. Oh, um, yeah. 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 I mean, that's a very, uh, I mean, uh, mania is, is, is big for me. Um, yeah. I always wanted to actually like do something with him, even though I don't know how that, well that would have gone, but, um, yeah, I've never met him. I mean, yeah, aside from aside from like sort of talking via Sam, I was that interesting. Yeah. Um, anyway, so him, um, 
Gosh, I really, it's, it's hard. It's okay. So it's hard because, you know, I have so many friends in, in, in noise who's like releases that I, that I love. Like, you know, I think fucking anytime Matt does fucking anything, it fucking destroys, um, Matt from, uh, there there is one, there's that one CD and Sam's going to kill me because I can't remember the name of it, but it's the Iula Thor opera CD. Yeah. Fuck. What's it called? It's the online right now. Do you remember what it's called? I don't remember what it's called. It's called opera. It has the gold. It has a gold cover. It's called opera. Is it called opera? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That one. Um, cool. I listened to that. Like when you said Matt, are you talking about Matt from Oxen from Unsustainable? Yeah, Matt from Oxen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, And obviously, I mean Taylor. uh, I've seen a bunch of different Taylor projects. I love. You know. um, I just yeah. I mean it's it's there's so honestly there's so many folks that fucking honestly that that um, ZK record or tape that Sam put out a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. Was probably one of my favorite sonic things i maybe ever heard like i thought that that i thought that that was so insane because like i don't know how she was making those sounds i don't know where those sounds came from and how how they just went in and in and out from each other i mean it was it sounded to me it was like tectonic shifting is what that recording sounded like to me um yeah it would be great to hear more from her yeah, top, well, I hope, right. I hope so. I love everything that Mac does. Um, yep. On top of being a, a a good a good friend, like I he's, and I like you know I like his weird IDM. Sh- I don't know. I don't even know what the project is. It God is War. He's God is War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, I love that stuff. I think, I think yeah, it's great. Um, it is great. I like it's very cool. Unit, of course. Yeah, I don't really listen to power electronics ever. I mean, I, although I guess Mania is technically considered power sure. electronics, but I don't really see it that way. But I, I think yeah. what Mac and Sam do is 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 really good. Um, Definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've, I honestly, I'm, I'm so boring. I just listen to like I listen to a lot of modern jazz, and then that's cool. Um, no, those, those, those are some solid. Um, it's a solid top five. Yeah, I, 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 I feel good about it. I'm, I don't know if there's any. <laughs> <laughs> can you, uh, can I, I mean, also like old pedestrian deposit, um, yeah. or any pedestrian deposit, to be honest, um, for sure. You know, uh, Phil, obviously, like you, I'd be remiss to not talk about um, Cherry Point. I mean, I, I think, I mean, so many of these folks I'm talking about are are here, or I mean, I guess you know, it's I, I, yeah, being around sort of the, those kind of you know iconic kind of. People. Definitely, LA is a big place for noise, for sure. Big place, yeah. For noise. I mean, Romero, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and you know, honestly, now that I mention it, like, I don't love everything, but I think that the way that Aaron Dillaway like approaches music is fucking fascinating, and yeah, I love the physicality involved in his practice. Um, and Definitely. Yeah, the rocking yeah, chair is like that's that's percussion. I mean, the rocking chair he uses live, you know. No, oh, totally. Yeah, completely. I mean, yeah. I mean, there, there are a lot of things he does live. Yeah, <laughs> there are a lot of things he does live where I'm just like, you are, you're, you know, you're, yeah, you're just doing it. You're doing a mic improv percussion thing right now, yeah. um, which I, he might yeah. know actually. Um, For yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's pretty. Uh, he's pretty up on this stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, I like. I like what he does a lot. Um, yeah. What about five um, new things? Not noise, but like like five. Because I'm fairly out of the loop for new music, and I'm. Mm-hmm. It's kind of by choice. I don't really like. Yeah, of course. Spend much time in it, but I mean, but I mean, maybe five newer bands in pretty much any genre you want to throw out there that that you think are really worth taking note of. Huh. Let me uh, let me open the old. If you have that, I mean, if someone asked me that, I'd be like, "What?" I couldn't answer. Yeah, but I mean, um, you might you might be someone to ask. There's a there's a percussionist who's also a friend of mine um, who I was a fan of before we were friends, named Matt mm-hmm. Weston. Um, mm-hmm. And I think if anyone is listening to this and likes what I do, um, they should ask to fucking lutely check Matt out because he does what I do better than I do. He's fantastic. Mm. 
um, and uses really interesting instruments. Like he uses a timpani as part of as part of his setup. So he and there's a lot of resonance, but a lot of a lot of fast movement and a ton of texture. Matt's mm. fucking fantastic. Um, really, what I've been actually I'm glad you asked. What I've been listening to most of, you know, Derek Bailey is right. Yes, guitar player. Okay. Yep. So uh, he's an to anyone that's listening that doesn't know, he was sort of the iconic, like improvising guitar player, um, who's has thousands of records, actually probably literally thousands of records out. Um, mm -hmm. but so he got into before, well, well before he passed, he got into, uh, playing along with, uh, like, uh, jungle, like on the radio, like, like drum and bass. Oh yeah. Cool. Okay. So there are two and, and one of them is there are two things that came up that they're not new recordings, but they both came out recently. Um, and they are, they're both that and they are, they're utterly, they're fucking fantastic. The probably the most, like the, the easiest one is called domestic jungle. Um, and it's, I, it's, it is, it is unbelievable. If, Crazy. So I've, I've been listening to the shit out of that. Um, I've been listening to a lot of stuff on the label Super Pang, which is like uh, an Italian label that does like a lot of like um, electroacoustics stuff. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a release on Super Pang, but I think they're mostly electroacoustic and um, electronic, like sort of contemporary electronic computer mm -hmm. music. Um, <clears throat> I've been listening to a lot of that. Um, yeah. What else? And then, yeah, just a bunch of stuff on e on ECM. <laughs> if people don't know what ECM is, it's a, it's a, it's a European sort of modern jazz. Um, well, that's not all they release, but, um, predominant, pre mostly modern jazz label, um, cool. that has sort of a lot of iconic music that all feels sort of very, <laughs> very cold and open. Uh, okay. sort of cool. the, the antithesis of American jazz is kind of what, the typical ECM releases, but so Killer. a lot of, that. I don't know anything about that. That's, Oh really? That's um, yeah. I mean, there's, there, there there's, there, t dude, there's so many great ECM releases. It would be hard to, to narrow them down. Uh, there's a record called the C2, which is by a piano player called Katil Bjornstadt. That is like the possible, if, if, if bleak and beautiful existed together, um, musically, it would be, it would be that record. It's electric mm. guitar, piano, uh, uh, cello and drums. Uh, it's awesome. Anyway, yeah. feel awesome. free to that's hit me a, up. That's, <laughs> that's a great. No, that, that's that's a great recommendation. That's uh, that's great to know. I mean, I'm I'm out of the loop on a lot of stuff, and I think who knows what the people out there know about. Yeah, but I, think I mean, be, that, I think honestly, that if, 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 if anyone takes anything away from this conversation today, go listen to that Derek Bailey Jungle record because it's insane. <laughs> That's cool. It was released by Scatter, which is a label from Edinburgh. Okay. Crazy. Cool, man. Yeah. Um, anything else you have coming up that you can let us know about or anything else you'd like to, you know, share with us that I maybe didn't ask I mean, about that you wanted to touch on? Not, yeah. I mean, not, not necessarily. Yeah. I mean, the, like the, there's, the, there's that CD with Michael and Sam coming out hopefully soon that I'm, that I'm excited about. Um, Do you know that's going to be called? I, I, we don't, we don't know. Um, and I think Sam has to finish his, his portion of it, but it's going to be mm -hmm. sort of unlike, it's going to be unlike anything that Sam and I have done together. So, so it's not just going to be like cackle car plus saxophone, you know what okay. I mean? It's going to be, yeah. it's going to have a very sort of different, different thing, which I'm um, excited about. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess that's, yeah, I guess that's it. I mean, I, I don't know if, if, if you're listening and, and I don't know you and if you've made it this far, thanks for like checking out stuff. <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure people have hung on and, and, uh, I hope, um, you know, we'll, we can put your, we'll put your contact info there for people. I don't know cool. if you want people hitting you up, but I mean, <laughs> but I mean, we, um, you know, people can get in touch and, uh, yeah. And yeah, I'm also always, always on, on the gram. So if anyone wants any 
info on stuff, please feel free exactly. to hit me up. Yeah, also, sharing, if anyone also... ever wants to talk about like what sounds, you know, what sounds are like how how things, you know, like what 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 sound combos might be good, like what like I don't know. It, it would be fun to talk to people about like maybe expanding their practices too. Yeah. I, I, I think I think you're someone who has a lot of conscious thought, obviously, about sound. I think that's something, just in general, I think I like to see more of disgust just in noise, you know, like both the, both the why and the what, you know, just like the specifics of sound. I think that's really great to, to dig into. Totally. And, I, I agree. And, well, because honestly, uh, yeah. like anytime I hear a noise record, like I want to, I want to know. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, even though I, even though I may not know what the pedal is or the, or, you know, you know, how, 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 whatever piece of bit that they're doing works, like, I want to know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want to, like, I think, I think that shit's super fascinating. Like, I think, you know, I think the way that, the, yeah. And how sort of people end up on, on, on sort of what they're, what they're using is, is, is cool. Um, so it would be neat to have sort of if people did engage in a more open conversation about like what that is. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all just here making sound. Right. Do you have any like experience or anything with like electronics? Have you ever None. messed around with any kind of stuff or, or? No, not once. That's cool. I mean, there, there's been part of me that's like wanted to, you know, but then I, but yeah, I don't. I acoustic uh, like the, the sort of act of hitting something and having it make a sound is is so much, or you know, or just touching something and having it make a sound is is just more gratifying to me personally. For sure. All right, man. Well, really appreciate it, Ted. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Great to hear what you have to say about those things, and looking forward to listening to your stuff you got coming out, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Oscar. All right. Thanks again for tuning in to White Sampy Noise Podcast. Head over to patreon.com slash white sampy noise now to support and see you guys next week for the video party.